Okay, so emergency video. Emergency because this was not a video I had planned for today because the information that I'm about to bring to you guys, I didn't expect it for not another two or three days because that's when they said the information was going to come out. I was even going to talk about some of the backlash that Oda and just One Piece in general was receiving because of what was supposed to come out. If you didn't know, it was reported probably a day or two ago that One Piece, well, the Viver cards were going to be released. And sometimes when they release that, they let us know what information will be in those river cards. So the information that was supposed to be in the river cards was King's Bounty, along with the other Toby Ropos, and some information about Kaido, Zoro, Yamato, etc. And a lot of people were upset because like, why are you releasing that information in a river card when King is fighting right now? You can release King's Bounty right now in the story. It would not take away from anything. But then we have to understand exactly what the river cards are for. So we're going to get into all the information I think is really really cool a lot of really neat stuff including king's bounty which has been revealed not really surprising in my opinion but kinda but if you enjoy information like this and you want to stay updated in regards to one piece subscribe to the channel and drop a like as well that certainly helps me out and i i would really appreciate that turn on post notifications as well because youtube be wildin and without further ado let's talk about the information from these Viver cards. So typically the sources I use for Viver cards is either the Library of O'Hara, um, Soulstorm OP, or Scotch Informer, right? So today we're using Scotch Informer and Soulstorm OP to just go through some of the important things that were covered because Twitter has been going crazy. If you've been on Twitter, you see how people are going back and forth because some things concerning Yamato has been a conversation for a while. I don't want to get too far into that. I've somewhat stayed away from that topic about Yamato and, you know, exactly what she identifies as. And we may have gotten some clarity in the Viver cards. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Some people are still sticking to their gun saying they're going to call. We'll get into it. First, let's talk about King. Okay, so according to Soulstorm OP, King's bounty is actually 1.39 billion. And that is actually higher than Marco's, higher than Katakuri's, as expected, higher than Queen's as well. So King so far has the highest bounty that we know of in the series from a first commander. I expect Ben Beckman to surpass that. I'm not sure about Shitty because he used to work for Impo Down. That could be a bit weird. But this is pretty big news. King, a lot of people were not, have not been impressed by King so far in Wano because they say that he hasn't done as much as they think he should have, but Oda has been saving him for a reason. His lineage, his race, his possible connection to Jerma. I would love to know the specific reasons behind King's bounty being this high. Again, King has been with Kaido for a long time and we also find out King's age. King is actually 47 years old, one year younger than Katakuri. And also guys, this is the really cool thing about this. It's also revealed that King was with Kaido when Shanks stopped them from going to Marineford. We've talked about this all the time, right? Kaido trying to go to Marineford and Shanks jumping in and stopping him. And there have been numerous speculations about what exactly happened when Kaido met Shanks. People were saying, well, they fought. Shanks obviously stopped him, then went to Marineford fully fresh, no damage, and was able to stop the war there, which I think yeah, no. The obvious thing here, and what makes the most sense, is that Kaido and Shanks, they came to some agreement, and Shanks gave Kaido something, preferably liquor, because we saw it before with Whitebeard, where Shanks brought exceptional liquor to Whitebeard, and, you know, he accepted it. So, I don't think if King is with Kaido, and Shanks is fighting Kaido, of course, Shanks is with his entire crew. We don't know if the others were there before. We remember in the story that, at some point, Kaido and all his commanders, they were not in Wano or in Onigashima at the time. That's how Ace was able to get there. But obviously, in this situation, the timelines don't match up because Ace, he was already at Marineford about to be executed. What I like about this is that, again, it's making the One Piece world feel much more alive. And that for these commanders, they're constantly, constantly leaving their post, traveling the One Piece world. But it being higher than Marco's, a slight surprise. I mean, a lot of people had Marco as probably, you know, a commander because he's been there for a while. He was Whitebeard's right hand. I think this speaks volumes about King and what he's actually done. We know at the beginning of Wano, they said King was, he liked to torture. Now I'm wondering for the bounty is his race and him being the last one. Is that reflected in it, right? I would like to know the specifics of how they came to that number, but this is really big news. Now, not to be outdone, well, to be outdone, the Toby Ropo and their bounties were released as well. And so for who's who, we have 546 million, Sasaki's 472 million, Black Maria 480 million, Alti 400 
400 million and page one 290 million how do you feel about this well those are not low bounties i just want to make that clear like who's who being at 540 million is pretty much at where commanders are that's what ace was pretty much before he died for sasaki black maria ulti in page one is pretty much what i expected the most intriguing one to me is black maria because we know sasaki and who's who they were pirate captains so i expected their bounties to be a bit higher black maria has a higher bounty than sasaki and black maria was defeated by nico robin i mean bounty does not exactly reflect strength so so that doesn't matter in the first place but i think it's really telling that the straw hats frankie and robin they were able to defeat characters with bounties like this i mean jinbei right something that was pointed out was that if you go to one piece chapter 546 the title of the chapter is captain jinbei fishman warlord of the sea i don't want to say like that's the reason why oda chose who's who's bounty number because the chapter was jinbei crazy coincidence i'm not gonna lie to you guys if it is a coincidence just I don't know. But for Black Maria, I'm wondering how she was able to snake over to 480 million berries. They did also mention the birthplaces of the Toby Ropo. Who's who? He was born in the North Blue, which oddly enough, it kind of makes sense. He just feels like a North Blue type of person, right? They specify Black Maria is from Wano and the other Toby Ropo, they were born in the Grand Line. So not specified there. They also mentioned a specific form of Black Maria, which was revealed to be her hybrid form, which is really different and I think pretty cool, but different, right? Something that was is also interesting because i mentioned king's age 47 years old and slightly taller than katakuri which is interesting well not slightly he's pretty significantly taller than katakuri queen is also taller than katakuri and also queen is 56 years old something to point out is that queen was a member of the research team with judge and vegapunk vin smoke judge was also 56 years old i don't want to jump to conclusions here but one could speculate that vegapunk is probably around the same age and the more i think about vegapunk i plan on talking about him really soon like a specific video dedicated to him i think oda may blow us away with his expectations or our expectations of what vegapunk should look like i think he's gonna look really young i think he's gonna look like pretty much like a kid Kid. like but not necessarily a kid but we're gonna be like how is that vegapunk how does vegapunk look like that young but that's just a feeling i have i mean you know it's just how older typically goes about things like we have old queen old judge and now we have just this youthful looking vegapunk just something i feel like Oda would do but anyway queen if i'm not mistaken probably is the oldest commander i mean queen is even older than ben beckman it explains some of his behavior because he is he is very odd, but I think that's really interesting. But Kaido's age, Kaido's age is intriguing too. Kaido is 59 years old. And before in the past, it was mentioned that Kaido was a part of Shanks' generation and not necessarily Big Moms and Rogers and that generation, which is, it's intriguing because he's, I mean, he's around eight years younger than big mom more like nine years but i guess when he came into prominence he was much older than the other yonko of the time but he's more so around shanks's generation 59 years old is not young but for one piece that's probably around the peak of some of these characters because that's where the admos are I mean, for big mom she's 68 years old and she's still going age i mean more and more age seems to not matter as much i think you probably fall off maybe around 70 around there after 70 but that is intriguing okay before i talk about yamato i want to talk about the toby Ropo because all the toby Ropo, every single one are confirmed to have both arm and hockey and observation hockey that was disappointing for a lot of people to hear i you know didn't really care about it didn't really matter because the story is the story you can say whomever has observation arm it rio right and you can pinpoint different situations in which it should have been used the story is the story knowing this information could things have been written better could things have been portrayed a bit better for the toby Ropo in particular yes right like for sasuke we didn't see any use of hockey i mean he could be using the invisible form of hockey but why why not use armament i mean it's interesting but it is what it is right now for yamato the news that was leaked about yamato that has the community in a frenzy is the fact that yamato is confirmed to be a female or a woman people are also pointing out well how can we know this is confirmed this is just the vivid cards which they can be wrong at times why are we using this well in kiku's vivid card it labels her as a male but it had a specific panel that points out that kiku identifies as a female so that was pointed out specifically for kiku that kiku is a male but kiku identifies as a female yamato had no such distinction female woman 
that's it. So a lot of people are going crazy on Twitter. Some people are, you know, holding firm saying they're going to just look at the story, forget the Viver cards, right? While still acknowledging King's bounty, which is interesting. And some people are using this as ammo, going back at some of these people that were being toxic about this entire situation. Overall, this probably became a bigger deal than it should have been because of just the world that we live in now. And a lot of people, they try to portray something they're not in virtue signal. It's, it's really odd behavior. However, doesn't really matter. I mean, for me, sometimes I say he, sometimes I say she for Yamato. Maybe I'm more so on the she side because that's what I see more, even portrayal and actions. And it's just not consistent. Even with that, if Yamato is identifying as Odin, if she wants to be Odin, why are you calling her or him Yamato? Call her Odin or call him Odin, but people don't do it. It's weird. It says she's a female. So at this point, you can call her him. You can call him her. It doesn't matter. But I think on both sides, both people should shut the fuck up. Where in the Viver cards, it says Yamato is a female. In the story, we have it saying the daughter of Kaido. We have Kaido calling her his son. So many different things. Both sides have arguments. Both sides keep your side. Don't try to engage and fight other people for having different beliefs. That's what I'm saying. Stop trying to do that. That doesn't make sense. Believe what you want to believe. Stop trying to fight the internet. You're fighting ghosts. Like It doesn't make sense. So there are other things in the river cards that other people find interesting. I mean, I'm sure other people will cover them like nicknames, etc. which I'm like, eh, whatever. I'll post a link below to Soulstorm OP. I'll post a link below to Scotch Informer. And you guys can go check out everything from the river card booster packs. However you feel about it, right? The river cards and the information released, it always causes a frenzy when they're released. So I really enjoy the river cards at this point for that in particular because of the conversation around it even though some of these things should have been in the story it's always fun when they're released because people absolutely lose their minds so guys give me your thoughts how do you feel about all this information also wait one more thing i'm forgetting one thing kaido's label basically he's called the strongest creature there's nothing in there saying rumors say people say it's just strongest creature take that for what it's worth take that for what you want i don't think it means anything at this point it's just hey strongest creature it is what it is that's just something that he's called some people are using it as an official label saying well kaido is the strongest creature acknowledge him as the strongest period but we have people that look at mihawk's title strongest swordsman and still put shanks ahead of him i mean i think titles are nuanced anyway well, some of them for the most part one piece is nuanced right so i don't think you can have a firm stance on either side you always have to be open to the possibility of being wrong and most of the times as one piece fans we can be wrong a lot but something that was also pointed out is that Zoro's title card, his favorite card, did not mention anything about Conqueror's Hockey. I mean, we'll wait and see about that. I don't think that matters. In the story, it says that Zoro has Conqueror's Hockey, but then people are going to be like, well, Yamato, eh, don't bring me into that. I'm, I'm, I'm out of that. We'll wait and see. But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about all this information? Leave it all below. It's a lot to take in initially, but, you know, take your time, process it, and leave your thoughts. Make sure to like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Guys, again, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. I start doubting me, I felt lost, I rewrite it.